Hello folks, welcome to our very first channel of card opening. We are Limitless. Today we've got this Magic the Gathering Anthology pack we're going to open. Really nice box here. We've got Battle Across the Multiverse. I am super excited to open this. Let's get into here. If I can do this easily, I can. Seriously, guys, love the box. Little dragon there. Shiny. <laughs> Alright, so, start this off. We've got our Planes Chase deck. Nice slide-off box. That's kind of cool. We'll come back to those. Oh, completely different box sets. That's really cool. I'm just going to sit here and open all these guys right off the hop. Get them set up for us. All right, let's see what other kind of cool accessories it came with. A little description pamphlet on how to play. A really nice Planes Chase die. Look at that. That's really cool. I like that. All right, four different life counter dies, spin downs. All really nice. All for the different elements, obviously for the different decks that they have. All right, we'll start with this guy here. Oh, Mythic Rare right on the front. Cond of the Dawnclad, Archie and Flying Vigilance 6-6. That's really cool. Whenever he attacks, exile a target permanent if he's enchanted. So I'm going to say this is probably an enchantment deck. Yeah, lots of things to do with enchantments in here. So we've got... Core Spirit Dancer, 2-2 two, two for each aura attached to it. Oh, that's a Hmm. I think I have a different deck that's going to go into. <laughs> Celestial Ancient, whenever we cast an enchantment spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Wow, that's a little OP. Uh, trample Lifelink, 4-4. Four, four. Spells you cast that target him cost two less to cast. Spells your opponents cast that target him cost two more to cast. All right. Predatory Urge, Rare Enchantment. This creature deals... Oh, that's going to be really rude in a big deck. Throw that on a big guy, tap it, just deal damage equal to creature. That's cool. Three dreams. Search your libraries for up to three aura cards with different names. Reveal them, then put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. That's really cool, too. Sigil of the Empty Throne. Enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying... Indric Umbra, it's an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus four, plus four, and has first strike, and all creatures able to block it do so. So totem armor, that's really cool. If anybody here is familiar with lure, it was an original enchantment. You threw it on a creature, all creatures had to block him. Really good to get around lots of token decks. Dream Pod Druid, at the beginning of your each upkeep. So not just yours, but everybody's upkeep. If Dream Pod Druid is enchanted, create a 1-1 one, one Saperling creature token. Alright, so a couple of those. We're going to make some tokens here. A 1-1 one, one Hexproof. Selenial Ledgewalker can't be blocked except by creatures with flying. So that's that would exclude Reach too, so they would actually have to have flying. An Auric Gnarled. Creatures with power less than Auric Gnarled's power can't block it. Auric Gnarled gets plus one, plus one for each aura on the battlefield. That's really cool. That doesn't just count yours, that counts everybody's. A couple of those, an Oromancer, when he enters the battlefield, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to hand. Armored Griffin, just a couple of 2-3 Flying Vigilance. One Lumber Knots, they're kind of cool. It's a 1-1 one, one Hexproof. Uh, whenever a creature dies, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Anybody's creature. Token creatures, your creatures, everybody's creatures. Thran Golem, he's kind of cool. You equip him. If you have him enchanted, he gets plus two, plus two, and has Flying, First Strike, and Trample. Now, that's enchanted, not equipped. That was my mishap. Sorry, guys. Um, Dowsing Shaman, three land to pay, tap, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's enchantment recycling. Bramble Element, whenever an aura becomes attached to Bramble Elemental, create two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. So another sapling producer. A, a tray. Aura Touched Mage. Human Wizard, 3-3, when Aura Touched Mage enters the battlefield, search your library for an Aura card that could enchant it. If 
or a touched mage is still on the battlefield, put that aura card onto the battlefield attached to it. Otherwise, reveal the aura card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Cool. Get into some lands. Dual color land, gain a life. Dual color land, gain a life. Uh, Crows and Verge enters the battlefield tapped. Add one wastes to your mana pool. Tap to tap it, sacrifice Crows and Verge. Search your library for a forest card and a plains card and put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. That's really cool. One land becomes two. Double land, return a land to your hand to play it. Double land, Terramorphic Expanse, you can sacrifice it to search for a land. Fight Ugazi, the city tree. That's kind of cool. You tap it for a waste, so you can pay four land with one being a forest, one being a plains. Tap it, create a sapling creature token. Bunch of forests, other lands, anything in the back here. Got a ranker, it's an enchantment. Crypt creature has plus two, plus zero, and trample. Whenever it's put into the graveyard, you can return it to your hand. Hyena Umbra, enchanted creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one, and has first strike. Totem armor. Fractured power stone. Tap it to add one colorless to your mana pool, or you can tap it to roll your planar die. Activate this only time you could cast a sorcery. This is the planar die for those who don't really know. And what it is, is if you hit the planes chase cycle, you actually flip a planes, one of these guys, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Back to here, we've got quiet dire spare. Oh, sorry, disrepair. Enchant artifact or enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Destroy enchanted permanent or you gain two life. That's kind of cool. A Feldar Umbra. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has lifelink. Pay one colorless, one planes. Attach it to target creature you control. So you can jump that back and forth between a bunch of different creatures. So that could be kind of fun. Got a couple of those. A spirit mantle. Enchanted creature has plus one, plus one in protection from creatures. Boar Umbra, Enchanted Creature has plus three, plus three. Totem Armor, Totem Armor. Another Snake Umbra, Enchanted Creature has plus one, plus one, and whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So that's how they get their extra draw in this one. Cage of Hands, Enchanted Creature, Enchanted Creature can't attack or block. Return Cage of Hands to its own hand, so it's a reusable pacifism. Ghostly Prison, oh, this is fun. All right, so creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two colorless for each creature he or she is attacking you. A mammoth Umbra. Crypt creature has, or enchanted creature has, plus three, plus three in vigilance. Totem armor. And lastly, we've got pollen bright wings. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has flying. Whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. So that's really cool. And uh, I know you guys heard me say totem armor a couple of times. For those of you who don't know what totem armor is, um, it's just whenever this creature dies, if it has an enchantment that has totem armor on it, you can remove one of the enchantments with totem armor instead of having the creature die. So that's really cool. So that's that guy. Going on to our next one here. It's the green pack. All right, so we have a Maelstrom Wanderer. He is really expensive. All right, so for a 7-5 elemental, creatures you control have haste. Ooh, Cascade, Cascade. That's going to be fun. Cascade gets real rowdy. And him being an 8 caster, you'll Cascade twice, so you can draw cards until you hit a card that has a mana cost of less than him, and then you can just put it on the battlefield. All right, Whirlpool Warrior, Merfolk Warrior. When Whirlpool Warrior enters the battlefield, shuffle the cards from your hand into your library, then draw that many cards. Hand reshift, that's kind of cool. Uh, also has a sack ability for one mountain. Sacrifice it, and each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into his or her library, then draws that many cards. So it's a complete gameplay change. That's kind of cool. Then we've got an Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. Artifact Creature Minotaur Wizard. Three land to play with one being blue, one being red. Return him to its owner's hand. And he's another Cascade. So that's really cool. A six cast Cascade that you can return to your hand. Oof, that could be rowdy. An Enigma Sphinx. 
another seven caster. Uh, five four flyer. When Enigma Sphinx is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, put it into your library third from the top. Cascade. Oh, that's that could be really rude, guys. Oh, an exotic orchard. Add to your mana pool one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. That's kind of cool. We've got a Sunken Hope. It's an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player returns a creature. He or she controls to their owner hand. So with Cascade, again, you can just start playing the Cascades and just dropping them quick. Mass Mutiny. For each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures. They gain haste until end of turn. That's kind of fun. Uh, last Stand. One of each land. There's a lot of text on this one. Target opponent loses two life for each swamp you control. Last stand deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Create a 1-1 green saprolin creature token for each forest you control. You gain two life for each plains you control. And draw a card for each island you control. Then discard that many cards. Well, I'm, I'm good with that until the discard. <laughs> Unless you have something cool that does something when you discard. And we've got a guard, Gamoza, Gamazoa. So he's a jellyfish. He's a 1-3 defender flying. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to him. So he's a beast blocker. <laughs> all right, Illusionary Angel. Angel Illusion. Flying. Cast Illusionary Angel only if you could cast another spell this turn. So he's just a 4-4 four, four for 3. That's kind of cool. Another one. A Shardless Agent. Uh, artifact creature, human rogue with cascade. He's just a 2-2 two -two cascade for three. A couple of them. A noggle rogue, noggle ransacker. When noggle ransacker enters the battlefield, each player draws two cards, then discards a card at random. So that could be rowdy too. Primal plasma, uh, star star. As primal plasma enters the battlefield, it becomes your choice of a 3-3 three -three creature, a 2-2 two -two creature with flying, or a 1-6 creature with defender. So he, you got options with him, really. Then we've got an Ondu Giant. When Ondu Giant enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So land pole, uh, a Cathari Remnant, a Bird Skeleton with Regenerate, 0-1 Flyer. Bloodbraid Elf, 3-2 uh, Haste, another Cascade. So I'm, I'm getting a real good feeling that this is a Cascade deck. It's just meant to get your deck out quick. Um, we've got a Peregrine Drake. It's a 2-3 flyer. When Peregrine Drake enters the battlefield, untap up to five lands. So he's free to play once you have the land to play him. Fusion Elemental. Just an 8-8. Big nasty. <laughs> Brutalizer Exarch. 3-3 uh, three, three Cleric. When Brutalizer Ixark enters the battlefield, choose one. Search your library for a creature card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Or put target non-creature permanent on the bottom of its owner's library. So that's kind of fun. Then we've got an Enlisted Worm, a 5-5 five, five Cascade, another 6-caster Cascade. A Rupture Spire is just a land you have to pay a land in order to keep it. A couple more. Shimmering Grotto, it's a waste. You can pay one and then that get in color of anything another terramorphic expands a vivid creek vivid creek enters the battlefield tap with two charge counters on it you can tap it to produce an island or you can tap it to produce a land of any color as you remove a charge counter so he can be two of anything or one of anything twice and then a blue bunch of land all five colors i'm assuming no only only three hmm <laughs> Millery Sphere, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Another one, Fractured Power Stone, it's the same one that lets you roll the dice and is a waste. See Beyond, draw two cards and shuffle a card from your hand into your library. See Beyond, and Arc Trail. So, Arc Trail deals two damage to target creature or player and one damage to another target creature or player. An Erratic Explosion. Choose target creature or player. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Erratic Explosion deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to that creature or player. Put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order. So we've got a Beast Within. 
destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Now that's really cool because it's a permanent. It doesn't have to be a creature enchantment, artifact, or anything like that. It can be anything. You can destroy a land if you want it. And then we've got a Cultivate. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tap and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Arrival's Duel. Choose two target creatures that share no creature types. Those creatures fight each other. That's simple. Deny Reality. A five cast cascade. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Then we've got a Bituminous Blast. It's another five casting cascade. Bituminous Blast deals four damage to target creature. Then we've got Fiery Faults. Five damage to target creature. Basic land cycling. And that's that one. All right, so that's the Cascade deck. I, I kind of like Cascade. Cascade's quick and fun. Uh, let's see. Let's get into this blue one here. I, I have high hopes for this blue one. All right, so right off the hop, we've got a Vela of the Nightclad. Yeah, legendary creature, human wizard, a 4-4 Intimidate. Other creatures you control have Intimidate. Whenever Vela, the Nightclad, or another creature you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Oh. Ooh. So, kill your own creatures. Who cares? <laughs> so, Sakashima's student. It's a human ninja. Ninjutsu. Oh, what is ninjutsu? Return an unblocked attacker you control to hand. Put this card onto the battlefield from your hand, tapped and attacking. Oh, so you just sw swip out a little creature that didn't get blocked and throw him in its place. You may have Sakashima's student enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a ninja in addition to its other creature types. Glen <laughs> Glenelendra Liege. He's a fairy knight. 2-3 flyer. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and other black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So if they're both, they get two. So we've got a uh, Hyger the Stillwind. So it's another legendary ninja with another ninjutsu ability. Okay, so whenever Higur the Stillwind deals combat damage to a player. You may search your library for a ninja card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. Uh, a two colorless land ability. Target ninja creature can't be blocked this turn. So that's really cool with ninjutsu, because that's not even a tap ability. You can do that multiple times. All right, so we've got a Dark Hatchling. He's a horror, a 3-3 flyer. When Dark Hatchling enters the battlefield, destroy target non-black creature. Can't be regenerated. Ink Eyes Servant of Oni, a rat ninja. Another ninjutsu guy. All right, so whenever Ink Eyes Servant of Oni deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And he has regenerate. He's really cool. Really cool. And we got a Silent Blade Oni. He's another ninjutsu. So this is definitely a ninja deck. Um, whenever Silent Blade Oni deals combat damage to a player, look at that player's hand. You may cast a non-land card in it without paying its card's mana cost? What? Okay. So there's, there's lots of applications for that guy. <laughs> Alright, so, Quintus Spike in equipment. Equipped creature has Death Touch. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half his or her life rounded up. All right, <laughs> Tormented Soul, 1-1. One, one. Tormented Soul can't block and can't be blocked. So you put this on him, and you just destroy them with a 1-1. One, one. You give him a little Tim Stick. A little Tim Stick, yeah, right? All right, so we got an Augury Hour. It's just a flyer. When he enters the battlefield, you get to scry three. Another one, a Skull Snatcher, and 2-1 Ninjutsu guy. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, exile up to two target cards from that player's graveyard. Ink Fathom Witch, a 1-1 one, one Fear. Each unblocked creature has base power and toughness of 4-1 until end of turn. Okay, so this deck is really rude. It's just going to be quick in, like, around everything. So, Baleful Strix, a 1-1 one, one Flyer Death Touch. When he enters the battlefield, he can draw a card, a couple of them. A Dimmer Infiltrator, 
Dimmer Infiltrator can't be blocked. Transmute, he's a 1-3. Um, Mistblade Shinobi, he's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Mistblade Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature that player controls to its owner's hands. It's another ninjutsu. Another ninjutsu, he's Walker of the Secret Ways. Whenever Walker of the Secret Ways deals combat damage to a player, look at that player's hand. Um, oh, you just get to look at their hand. Nothing else after that. Another, another land ability. Yeah, another telepathy. So, return target ninja you control to its owner's hand. Activate this ability only once during your turn. Alright, well that's cool. You can just start bringing your ninjas back to be able to just drop them out with your ninjutsu abilities again. Then we have a Wall of Frost, just a big 0-7 defender. Whenever Wall of Frost blocks a creature, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So it detains it for a turn. Cadaver Imp, 1-1 uh, one, one Flyer, whenever you enter this battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Liliana's Spectre, a 2-1 Flyer. When Liliana's Spectre enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. That's fun. Ninja of the Deep Hours, another 2-2 Ninjutsu. When Ninja of the Deep Hours deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Another one, a Throat Slitter, a 2-2 Ninjutsu guy. Whenever Throat Slitter deals combat damage to a player, destroy target non-black creature that player controls. So destroy. We've got Okiba, Gang Shinobi, a 3-2, another Ninjutsu guy. So whenever Okiba, Gang Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, that player discards two cards. Cool. Couple of double lands, double land for life. Hmm. Okay, so this is weird. It's a tainted isle. Tap it for a waste, or tap it for an island or a swamp to your mana pool. Activate that only that ability only if you control a swamp. A terramorph expanse. Bunch of basic land. Some more basic land. All right. Now we got some equipment here. Sigh of the Shinobi. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Psy of the Shinobi to it. So you can equip it for free if you play a creature. That's kind of cool. Especially with all of the ninjutsu. Just thinking about that, if somebody didn't block one of your little 1-1s one and you had this on the battlefield, you swap your 1-1 one -one out with a ninjutsu that's big and you put both of these on them just for free and then he just automatically hits him with an additional two on the front end that's fun another fractured power stone we've got a whisper silk cloak equipped creature can't be blocked and has shroud a um, couple of assassinates destroy target tapped creature cancels counter spell concentrate draw three cards and a farsight mask whenever a source and opponent controls deals damage to you if farsight mask is untapped you may draw a card so that's fun all right, so that's the third one. That one's really fun. I'm gonna have fun with it. I'm sure a couple of my friends are gonna hate me for it, <laughs> but that's fine. They, they hate me enough as is. Oh, Comes oh, with tokens. A little pack of tokens, guys. A little, little, little fun excess pack. That's cool. Oh, Drazi spawns. That's mm -hmm. right. A black spider, a two four spider token. Really? Usually you only get one threes or one twos. I might steal those from my. See if I can do spider tokens with reach for my spiders. If you need a spider token, I've got green spider tokens. Oh, yeah, that's a black spider token. Yeah. So, starting on this one is a big hellion. So, we've got Thromok the Insatiable. So, he's a legendary creature. He's a zero zero. Devour, Devour X, where X is the number of creatures devoured this way. That's, so that's, yeah. The whole uh, that's the wow. So, however many creatures you eat with him or feed to him, he's that big. <laughs> uh, mitotic Slime. It's a 4-4. Four, four. When Mitotic Slime dies, create two 2-2 two, two green ooze creature tokens with when this creature dies, create two 1-1 one, one ooze creature tokens. So really, he's a 4-4 four, four that you have to kill seven times? Yeah, you'd have to kill him seven times. You kill him as a 4-4, four, four, oh, then you yeah. kill the two two twos, and then you kill the four one ones. So, yeah, sure. 
So we've got a Mycoloth. He is a fungus. He's a devourer too. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it. That's cool. All right. Pry... Prey Caesar Dragon? All right, so a Prey Caesar Dragon. 4-4 four, four Flying Devour 2. Whenever Prey Caesar Dragon attacks, it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on Prey Caesar Dragon. That's rude. All right, so we've got a Dragon Lair Spider. A 5-6 Reach. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. We have an Awakening Zone, which is an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn. Creature token with sacrifice this creature, add one waste to your mana pool. That's cool, that'll make things go quicker. Sacrifice all creatures you control, then create that many 4-4 four, four red hellion creatures tokens. Okay, we've got a war storm surge. I love these. Alright, so, a war storm surge. It's an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Rude. <laughs> Taku Tung Tuka Tung Thalid. So he's a 1 1 fungus. When he dies, create a 1 1 green sapperling creature token. So you get two 1 1s for one that you get one at a time. That's kind of fun. Another one, a Brindle sh Shoat? Shot? Shoat? Shoat. I'm going to call it a Shoat. Brindle Shoat. Little Brindle sh Shoat dies. Create a 3 3 green boar creature token. A couple of them. Nest Invader, an Eldrazi drone. When Nest Invader enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token with sacrifice this creature out of waste to your pool. Viridian Emissary. He's an elf scout, 2-1. Whenever Viridian Emissary dies, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Rampant Growth Creatures. Rampant Growth Creature. Wall of Blossoms, a 0-4 defender. When Wall of Blossoms enters the battlefield, draw a card. Hissing Iguana, whenever another creature dies, you may have Hissing Iguana deal one damage to target player. That's fun. Uh, Mud Button Torch Burner, or Torch Runner, sorry. <laughs> He's a Goblin Warrior. He's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever he dies, he deals three damage to target creature or player. So that's fun. A couple of them. A Thunder Thrash Elder. He's a Vaishino Warrior with Devour 3. Another one. Gluttonous Slime. 2-2 two, two with Flash and Devour. So, play anytime you can play an instant. Null Mage Advocate. Return two target creature cards from an opponent's graveyard to his or her hand. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Reusable Destroy. That's kind of cool. Who cares if you have to return two cards back to them? If you give them two little creatures that you know you can kill right away, you can get rid of one of their enchantments or artifacts that are just... Causing you some dismay. We've got a Thorn Thrash by Shino. He's a 2 2 Devour 2 with a pay ability. You pay one Forest, you Thorn Thrasher by Shino gains Trample until end of turn. That's fun with Devour. When Beetleback Chief enters the battlefield, create two 1 1 Red Goblin creature tokens. So I'm seeing a lot of like token producers. I bet you you're devouring all of your tokens to make your guys big. That's the way I see this working real well. And we've got a Penumbra Spider. He's a 2-4 spider with reach. When he dies, create a 2-4 black spider creature with reach. Alright, so that's cool. Hellkite Hatchling. 2-2 two, two dragon with devour 1. Hellkite Hatchling has flying and trample if it devoured a creature. Cool. Double land, double land, dual land with uh, life gain, dual land with life gain... Colony Garden. When Colony Garden enters the battlefield, tap. When it enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 plant creature token. So another token to sack and eat. Scrag the Rage Pits. Scarg the Rage Pits, sorry. It's a land. Tap ability for wastes or pay one forest, one mountain, tap it. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains trample until end of turn. That's going to be fun in this deck with all the Devour. Terramorphic Expanse, Basic Lands, Basic Lands. All right, we've got a Flare Husk. It's a Living Weapon. Equipped Creature gets plus one, plus one. And for those of you who don't know what Living Weapons are, as you cast them, you create a zero, zero Germ token, and you equip this to it. 
Another Flare Tusk, another Fractured Power Stone. Fiery Conclusion. As an additional cost to cast Fiery Conclusion, sacrifice a creature. Fiery Conclusion deals 5 damage to target creature. A Fling. As an additional cost to cast Fling, sack a creature. Fling deals damage equal to sacrificed creature's power to target creature or player. Mark of Mutiny. Steal a creature. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it until end of turn. It gains haste. Fires of Yavimea. Creatures you control have haste. Sacrifice it and creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. That's fun. And an overrun, because everybody has fun with overrun. Creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn. All right, so that's those. Let's quickly get into these uh, tokens here. I'm excited, because that deck produces a lot of tokens, and I think these are all two-sided tokens. All right, so we've got two four spider, a beast, Couple of angels, some five five dragons, some goblins, ooze, the one ones, the four one ones. I bet you the other sides are the two twos and the the four fours. Oh, oh we got some plants. All right. Oh, we got a goat token. That looks kind of sick. Oh, goat needs some real medical attention there. Got a weird zombie. More weird zombies, some Eldrazi, that's not an Eldrazi Scion, that is a 7-7 seven, seven Eldrazi with Annihilator 1. Wow, I wonder what makes those tokens. We've got Eldrazi spawns, Eldrazi spawns, Hellions, Insects, looks like a Tick, Ooze, Plants, Boar, Germ. See, that's the germ I was talking about for those living weapons. Yeah, a bunch of sapperlings. All right, so a couple of cool two-sided tokens. Lastly, let's get into our main attraction here, the actual Plains Chase cards. These are fun. That is a big stack of Plains Chase cards. Now, a typical Plains Chase deck, you get 20 cards. That's it. Actually... I think I'm mistaken. I think it is only 10. 15? 15. I think it's 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is probably a specific deck for each of these. Alright, so we've got a Chaotic Aether. When you encounter Chaotic Aether, each blank roll of the planar die is one of those. Roll until planar is... Then planes walk away from this phenomenon. All right, so all of your blank sides just become another planes chase swap. All right. Now we've got interplanar tunnel phenomenon. So when you encounter interplanar tunnel, reveal cards from the top of your planar deck until you reveal five plane cards. Put a plane card from among them on top of your planar deck, then put the rest of the revealed cards on the bottom in a random order. Hmm. I, I don't know really what good that would be. I, I haven't played enough Planes Chase yet, but we'll get there. We've got Morphic Tide. When you encounter Morphic Tide, each player shuffles all permanents he or she owns into his or her library. Then reveals that many cards from the top of his or her library. Each player that puts all artifact, creature, land, and planeswalker cards revealed this way onto the battlefield. Then does the same for enchantment cards. Then puts all cards revealed that way that weren't put onto the battlefield on the bottom of his or her library in any order. So that's just a complete game change for everybody. Complete randomness. That could be rowdy. All right, so we've got a Mutual Epiphany Phenomenon. When you encounter Mutual Epiphany, each player draws four cards. So, draws cards. Plane-wide Disaster. When you encounter Plane-wide Disaster, destroy all creatures. Wrath of God. Wrath of God, right there. Destroy everything. All creatures, gone. Gone. All right. Reality Shaping, a Phenomenon. When you encounter Reality Shaping, starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from his or her hand onto the battlefield. Hoo-wee. Who cares about the mana cost? I'm going to play my 15-15, or my, my big 15 caster. Why not? <laughs> sure. 
Spiritual merging phenomena. When you encounter spiritual merging, reveal cards from the top of your planar deck until you reveal two plane cards. Simultaneously, planes walk to both of them. Put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your planar deck in any order. That could be interesting. Double up your boasts, right? All right, so we've got time distortion, a phenomenon. When you encounter time distortion, reverse the game's turn order. Okay, so instead of going to the left, go to the right. <laughs> Academy of at Talaria West. That's really cool. I actually have the land Talaria West Vale. So, at the beginning of your end step, if you have no cards in hand, draw seven cards. Oh my god, my burn deck. Sorry, guys. That's My burn deck's a little rude. So, the Aether Flues. Ah, uh, it's a plane. When you planeswalk to the Aether Flues or at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle all other cards revealed this way into your library. <sighs> that would be fun in a token deck, because you sack a token and you get your big creature out for it. So, sure. <laughs> Egerim. Egerim. When the white creature dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Whenever a non-white creature dies, return it to its owner's hands at the beginning of the next end step. So, if you got a solid white deck, that would be fun. Akum. Players may cast enchantment spells as though they had flash. That's really cool. And there's planar abilities in these I haven't really been paying attention to. Sorry guys, I'm just going to start from here, but it's got a plane ability. Whenever you roll a plane ability, destroy target creature that isn't enchanted. Ooh. Alright. So, Eratopolis. Uh, when you planeswalk to Eratopolis or at the beginning of your upkeep, put a scroll counter on Eratopolis. Then you gain life equal to the number of scroll counters on it. When Eratopolis has ten or more scroll counters on it, planeswalk. And Planes Ability. Whenever you roll Planes Ability, put a scroll counter on Eratopolis. Then draw cards equal to the number of scroll counters on it. That's cool. Astral Arena. Um, no more than one creature can attack each combat. No more than one creature can block each combat. Sure. Hit the Planar Ability. Whenever you roll it, it deals two damage to each creature. Oh, that'll kill tokens quick. Bant. Uh, all creatures have exalted. Ho, oh, wow. So creatures with exalted. If any of your creatures have exalted and you attack with a single creature, if that creature attacks alone, for each creature that has exalted, it'll get an additional plus one, plus one. So when you hit the ability there, whenever you roll it, put a divinity counter on target green, white, or blue creature. That creature has indestructible for as long as it has its divinity counter. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> Alright, so Blood Hill Bastion. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it gains double strike and haste until end of turn. And if you hit the ability, whenever you roll it, exile target non-creature you control, or non-token creature you control. Then return it to the battlefield under your control. Oh, so that's a stealer. Sweet. Celestine Reef. Uh, creatures without flying or island walk can't attack. That's plain and simple. Whenever you roll the ability until a planes until a player planes walks, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Well, darn. That's cool. <laughs> Cliffside Market. When you planes walk to Cliffside Market or at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exchange life totals with target player. That's again rowdy. Like, why? That sure. <laughs> All right. So you hit the ability. Um, exchange control of two target permanents that share a card type. That's fun too. Dark Barony. So whenever a non-black card is put into a player's graveyard from anywhere, that player loses one life. Yes. That's going to be fun with zombies. Whenever you roll the planar ability, each opponent discards a card. Edge of Malakal. If a creature you control would... Untap during your untap step, put two plus one plus one counters on it instead. Whenever you roll the ability, untap each creature you control. That's fun. Lauren Wilds. 
plane, a chandelier. So when a player taps a permanent for mana, that player adds one mana to his or her mana pool of any type that permanent produced. So it would produce double. Cool. Whenever you roll the ability, target player can't cast spells until a player planeswalks. That's fun. The Eon Fog. All right. Players skip their untap steps. Whenever you roll the ability, untap all your permanents. Oh. That's not just creatures. That's everything. Land 2. <laughs> Feeding Grounds. Red spells cost one less to cast. Green spells cost one less to cast. Hit the ability. Uh, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature where X is that creature's converted mana cost. Eldrazi's. Seriously, guys. Eldrazi's. Converted mana cost of like six and up. All right, so Fields of Summer. Whenever a player casts a spell, that player may gain two life. Roll the ability, you may gain ten. Fourth Sphere. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a non-black creature. When you roll the ability, create a 2-2 two -two zombie creature token. will be black. Furnace Lair. When you planeswalk to Furnace Lair or at the beginning of your upkeep, select target player at random. Target player discards a card. If that player discards a land card this way, he or she loses three life. If you hit the ability, you may destroy target non-land permanent. Gavany. All creatures have vigilance. When you roll the ability, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Glenilendra. At end of combat, you may exchange control of target creature you control that dealt combat damage to a player this turn, this combat, and target creature that player controls. Um, hit the ability. Gain control of target creature you own. So you deal them damage, you swap out your creature with them, you hit the ability, you get your creatures back. Oh, one. One of your creatures back. Glimmer Void Basin. Um, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell with a single target, he or she copies that spell for each other spell permanent card not on the battlefield and or player the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of them. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt everything. <laughs> Alright, so whenever you hit the ability, choose target creature. Each player except that creature's controller creates a token of that. That's a copy of that creature. <laughs> that's funny. Gold Meadow. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, that land's controller creates a 0-1 white goat creature token. Hit the ability, create a white token. Yeah. Yeah, I just realized you were the farm side. Grand Usury. Whenever a creature dies, its controller distributes a number of plus one plus one counters equal to its power among any number of target creatures he or she controls. The ability is whenever you roll it, each player exiles all creatures he or she controls and creates X11 green sapling creature tokens where X is the total power of the creatures he or she exiled this way. Then planeswalk. All right, so now we've got the Great Forest. Each creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. It's great for a defender deck. Whenever you roll the planar ability, creatures you control get plus zero, plus two, and gain trample until end of turn. That's fun. Grixie. Blue, black, and or red creature cards in your graveyard have unearth. The unearth cost is equal to that card's converted mana cost. That's cool. Um, whenever you roll the ability, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Grove of the Dream Pods. When you planeswalk to Grove of the Dream Pods or at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and have the rest on the b and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever you roll the ability, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Not even your hand, just straight to the battlefield. Hedron. Fields of Agadim. Creatures with power 7 or greater can't attack or block. Whenever you roll the planar ability, create a 7-7 seven, seven colorless Eldrazi creature token with Annihilator 1. That's how I make those fun tokens. The Hippodrome. All creatures get negative 5, negative 0. It's like hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> hungry, hungry hippos. 
Whenever you roll the ability, you may destroy target creature if its power is zero or less. Horizon Bows. All permanents untap during each player's untap step. That could be dangerous. Um, whenever you roll the planar ability, you may search your library for up to three basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield, tap, and shuffle your library. Immerstrom. Inner Sturm. Immer Sturm. Okay, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield, that creature's controller may have it deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player of his or her choice. Whenever you roll the ability, exile target creature, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Sweet. Isle of Vesu Vesiva. Uh, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller creates a token that's a copy of that creature. Cool. Whenever you roll the ability, destroy target creature and all other creatures with the same name as that creature. Zet Steam Maze. Uh, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that player copies it. The player may choose new targets for the copy. Whenever you roll the ability, instant, and sorcery spells you cast this turn cost three colorless less to cast. Jund. Whenever a player casts a black, red, or green creature spell, it gains devour five. Roll the planar ability, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creatures. Kessig. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by non-werewolf creatures. Whenever you roll the planar ability, each creature you control gets plus two, plus two, gains trample, and becomes a werewolf in addition to its other types until end of turn. Karasha Foothills. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks a player, for each other opponent, you may create a token that's a copy of that creature tapped and attacking that opponent. Exile those tokens at the beginning of your next end step. So attack one, and you'll attack everybody. Um... You may sacrifice any number of creatures. If you do, Cars of Foothills deals combat damage, deals that much damage to target creature. Only creature. Kilnspire District. When you planeswalk to Kilnspire District or at the beginning of your pre combat main phase, put a charge counter on Kilnspire District, then add one mountain to your mana pool for each charge counter on it. That could be really rowdy with burn. Uh, whenever you roll the ability, you may pay X. If you do, Kilnspire District deals X damage to target creature or player. <laughs> Croza. All creatures get plus two, plus two. Whenever you roll the ability, you may add one land of every color to your mana pool, except for the new land that's coming out or wastes. Layer... It's a rumor that it's going to come out. Yeah, it's been a rumor forever and a day. So, Lair of the Ashen Idol. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. If you can't, planeswalk. Whenever you roll the ability, any number of target players each create a 2-2 zombie creature token. Leth Lake. At the beginning of your upkeep, put the top 10 cards of your library into your graveyard. Whenever you roll an ability... Target player puts the top 10 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Land War. All creatures have tap. Add two forests to your mana pool. Um, tap. Untap all creatures you control if you hit the ability. The Maelstrom. When you planeswalk to Maelstrom or at the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you reveal the card but didn't put it onto the battlefield, put it on the bottom of your library. Whenever you hit the ability, return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Cool. Minamo. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell, that player may draw a card. If you hit the ability, each player may return a blue card from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. Mirror Depths. Whenever a player casts a spell, that player flips a coin. If he or she loses the flip, counter that spell. That's fun. Um, if you hit the ability, target player reveals the top card of his or her library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Mount Coralia. At the beginning of your end step, put a pressure counter on Mount Coralia. 
Uh, when you planeswalk away from Mount Coralia, it deals damage equal to the number of pressure counters on it to each creature and each planeswalker. Ouch. You don't want to sit on that too long. Uh, prevent all damage that planes named Mount Coralia would deal this game to permanents you control. Oh, so if it comes up and you just want to hit the ability, it protects you from it. That's okay. Uh, Murasa. So whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle his or her library. Hit the ability, target land becomes a 4-4 creature that's still a land. Nar Isle. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a flame counter on Nar Isle. Then Nar Isle deals damage to you equal to the number of flame counters on it. If you hit the ability, it deals 3 damage to target player. Naya, you may play any number of lands on each of your turns. Cool. Hit the ability, target red, green, or white creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each land you control. Ouch. <laughs> Nefalia, at the beginning of your end step, put the top seven cards from your library into your graveyard, then return a card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever you roll the ability, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Norn's Dominion. So, when you planeswalk away from Norn's Dominion, destroy each non-land permanent without a fate counter on it, then remove all fate counters from all permanents. Whenever you hit the ability, you may put a fate counter on target permanent. Unaki Catacomb. All creatures are black and have death touch. Rude. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain first strike until end of turn if you have roll the ability. Orochi Colony. Um, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Whenever you hit the ability, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Orzova. When you planeswalk away from Orzova, each player returns all creature cards from his or her graveyard to the battlefield. Battlefield, not hand, battlefield. That's fun. For each opponent, exile up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard if you hit the ability. Otaria. Um, instant and sorcery spells in graveyards have flashback. The flashback cost is equal to the card's mana cost. That's fun. Uh, if you hit the ability, you get to take an extra turn after this one. Keep hitting the ability. Keep hitting the ability. Panopticon. A panopticon? When you planeswalk to panopticon, draw a card. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Howling Mine. If it hit the ability, you get to draw another card. Pools of Becoming. Um, Plane. Bolus's Meditation Realm. That's cool. At the beginning of your end step, put target, put the cards in your hand on the bottom of your library in any order, then draw that many cards. Hand reshift. Uh, hit the ability, reveal the top three cards of your planar deck. Each of the revealed cards, planar abilities, triggers. Then put the revealed cards on the bottom of your planar deck in any order. That's rude with how some of these were. Prov. If you cast a spell this turn, you can't attack with creatures. If you attacked with creatures this turn, you can't cast spells. So an Arbiter Angel, in a different card form. Whenever you roll the thing, the ability, you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Quicksilver Sea. When you planeswalk to Quicksilver Sea, you're at the beginning of your upkeep, scry 4. That's fun. If you hit the ability, you reveal the top card of your library. You may play it without paying its mana cost. Ravens Run. All creatures have withers, so they deal damage to creatures and negative one, negative one counters. Um, hit the ability, put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature, two negative one, negative one counters on another target creature, and three. So if you hit the ability, it's an incremental blight. That's cool. Sanctum of Sarah. When you planeswalk away from Sanctum of Sarah, destroy all non-land permanents. Ouch. Another Wrath of God, or a Planar Cleansing, actually. Um, you may have your life total become 20 if you hit the ability. Life Reset. Sea of Sand. So, 
Players reveal each card they draw. Whenever a player draws a land card, that player gains 3 life. Whenever that player draws a non-land card, that player loses 3 life. Ooh. That's rude. Hit the ability, put target permanent on top of its owner's library. Selenia Loft Gardens. Um, if an effect would create one or more tokens, it creates twice that many tokens of those tokens instead. If an effect would place one or more counters on a permanent, it places twice that many counters on those permanents instead. Ooh. Until end of turn, whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. So it double, doubles your land, doubles your tokens, doubles your counters. Shiv. All creatures have pumpable. Tap one mountain, this creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Hit the planar ability, uh, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. Skybreen. Players play with the top card of their libraries revealed. Spells that share a card type with the top card of a library can't be cast. Whenever you roll the planar ability, target player loses life equal to the number of cards into his or her hand. So Kenzen. All creatures get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Whenever you roll the planar ability, untap all creatures that attacked this turn. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. That's really cool, the fact that it gives you an additional main phase and a combat phase. That's two combat phases and three main phases in one turn. Stairs to Infinity. Players have no maximum hand size. Whenever you roll the planar die, draw a card. Um, if you hit the ability, reveal the top card of your planar deck. You may put it on the bottom of your planar deck. Okay. Stencia. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to, or deals damage to one or more players for the first time each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Um, hit the planar ability, each creature you control gains tap, this creature deals one damage to target player until end of turn. Stronghold Furnace. Um, if a source would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage to that creature or player instead. Stronghold Furnace deals one damage to target creature or player. Taken Numa. Whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, its controller draws a card. Hit the ability, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. Talon Gates. Anytime you could cast a sorcery, you may exile a non-land card from your hand with X time counters on it, where X is its converted mana cost. If the exiled card doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. If you hit the ability, remove two time counters from each suspend card you own. Tazim. Creatures can't block. You hit the ability, you draw a card for each land you control. That's kind of fun. Timber City. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, Timber City deals one damage to that player. Mana Barb. Whenever you roll the planar ability, each other player sacrifices a non-land permanent. Trail of the Mage Rings. Instant and sorcery spells have rebound. That's cool. Um, the rebound spell is... Yeah. So the spell's controller exiles the spell as it resolves if he or she cast it from his or her hand. At the beginning of that player's next upkeep, he or she may cast that card from exile without paying its mana cost. So, if you hit the ability, you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. True Good Jungle. All lands have tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So, that's not in addition. That it would be you can make one of anything or the one that it originally makes. Uh, hit the ability, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Turi Island. Creature spells cost two less to cast. Um, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Under City Reaches. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may draw a card. If you hit the ability, you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Vel is Vel. 
Each creature gets plus one plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. For example, if two elemental shamans and an elemental spirit are on the battlefield, each gets plus two plus two. Whenever you roll the ability, target creature gains all creature types until end of turn. Wind Riddle Palaces. Players play with the top card of their libraries revealed. You may play the top card of any player's library. What? You may play the top card of any player's library. That's fun with a five color deck. If you hit the ability, each player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And lastly, the Zephyr Maze. Creatures with flying get plus two, plus zero. Creatures without flying get negative two, negative zero. Ooh, dragons. Target creature gains flying until end of turn if you hit the ability. All right. That was it for our anthology pack. That was quite a run, guys. I'm, I don't know about you, I'm pretty happy. Um, thanks for watching. This was Limitless number one. Have a wonderful night.